Hi, for this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a binomial probability distribution using the TI-84. If you have to do this process using the binomial probability formula, it is going to take you a while to do this because you have to go through and calculate the individual probabilities of each event, and it is very time consuming. So this is really a shortcut to doing all this so that you don't have to find each individual probability over and over again. All right, so what we have here is a die is rolled six times. X represents the number of times a five is rolled. Create a binomial probability distribution and a graph. The reason that I know it's binomial is remember with binomial, you have to do it for a fixed number of trials. So this tells us that we're gonna roll the die six times. So that's our fixed number of trials. The second thing is that the probability of success has to remain constant. Um, throughout the whole thing. So every time I die, I roll a die, the probability of success stays the same. I still have a one out of six chance of rolling a five. Even if I got a five on the first one, I have a one out of five chance or one out of six chance of rolling that five again on the next one. The probability of failure is needed if you are using the formula, but if you are using your graphing calculator to help you, um, you won't need the formula. So I would just do one minus um, P to get the probability of failure, which happens to be 5 sixth. And then X, remember, has to represent the counts um, or the possible times that you could get a success out of six times. So I already have those listed down here. We could have zero successes. That means I could roll a die six times and not get any fives. Or I could get one five or two fives or three fives or four fives or etc. All the way down to six. Six is the most that I could get. Okay, so we're going to look at the probabilities of all of those. And like I said, I'm going to use the TI-84 to help me do that. So let me grab my calculator. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to stat and edit. And we're going to use L1. Right now I have information in there. So if you want to get rid of any information that you have, hit clear and not delete. I'm going to hit clear and enter and it gets rid of everything. In L1, I want to put my X value. So the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then in L2, after I put in all of my possible, possible values of X, I'm going to go up to L2 where it's highlighted. You do want to make sure that you are up here and not down here. Because if you're down here, it's going to give you an error because you can only put one value in there at a time. I want to populate the entire column, so I'm going to select L2. And then what I'm going to do is my distributions, if you notice above VARS, it says D-I-S-T-R. That represents all of the different probability distributions that your graphing calculator is stored with. So um, I'm going to hit second and VARS, which is the distributions. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to scroll until I find binome PDF. So binome PDF is what um, you are going to be looking for. It's different depending upon your calculators. In some calculators, it's option zero. Um, in the newer calculators, it's option A because the newer calculators are programmed with inverse T. So there is a difference. So you do have to scroll down to find it. So again, that was second distributions. And then just scroll until you find binome PDF. For this, if this screen doesn't show up, I will show you on the next screen what you would do to enter it in case you have an older calculator that the prompts don't come up. The trials represents the number of times that you are repeating the binomial experiment. In this case, we are repeating it six times because we're rolling the die six times. We do need to know the probability of success. So in this case, the probability of rolling a five is one out of six. And the X value we stored all of our X values in L1, so I am going to do second L1 because that will allow me to store it there, and then I'm going to hit paste. So for those of you that that menu didn't show up, you're going to have at the bottom, it's going to say L2 binome PDF parenthesis, and then you would just type in the number of trial 6, comma, P, comma, wherever you have your X values. So in this case, we had our X values in L1, so you would have just hit the same thing that I hit. It just doesn't nicely prompt you. So I'll write that down in a second. After you have plugged this in, you're gonna hit enter, and it automatically calculates the probabilities of each of these values. 
Okay, so for this one, if you guys notice, it says 6.4 E negative 4. Your calculator, that means scientific notation. So if I actually scroll down to it, it will show me, and uh, sorry, my other one, my TI Inspire does show me this as a decimal. What this means is scientific notation. This means that there are four, I have to move this decimal places over four places to the uh, left. So this is really 0 .0006, which means it's pretty close to a 0% probability of that happening. So for statistics, anything that is less than 5% is typically the, is the default for unusual. So rolling four is unusual, rolling five is unusual, and six is almost impossible. Okay, so let me go ahead and write these probabilities down. So to fill out your probability distribution, you would just simply write those down. I have them on paper. The probability of rolling a zero or getting, sorry, not rolling a zero, rolling a five zero times happens about 33% of the time. So out of six rolls, 33% um, of the time this happens. One, exactly one happens 40 0.19% of the time, or 0.4019. Two is 2009. Three is 0.0536. And remember on four, um, sorry, not on four, it started on five. This was 0 0.0080. On five, it put it as 0.6E negative four, so we would just write that as 0 0.0006. And for the last one, if you rounded it to four places, it would actually round to zero, but this is really 0 0.0002. So this is extremely unlikely. If I rolled my die six times and all six of them happen to be a five, that tells me that there's probably something wrong with the dice because you have essentially a 0% probability of that happening. So any one of these events out of six rolls would be considered unusual because they are less than 5%. So these would be unusual to happen. Okay, um, as you move through statistics, you kind of get more of a feeling of what probabilities mean. Um, anything that happens more than 5% of the time is something that we tend to see because it's within two standard deviations of the mean. Um, if it's more than 5%, that's what you expect to see. If it's less, then it becomes unusual. Um, I put last, I meant less. So I'm just going to say since this is less than 5%. Okay, so when we go to graph this, all you would do is do a histogram, and it's very important to include your labels on your graph. So over here, we always put our probability of X. This is really just a relative frequency histogram. I'm going to count by 10%. So this is 0 0.10, 0 0.20, 0 0.30, 0 0.40, 0 0.50, 0 0.40, and 0.50. Um, if it helps, you could kind of do a little halfway tick mark to say that this would be 5%. That's just the midpoint. Um, you don't have to do that, but anything to just kind of help it make it easier for you. Down at the bottom, you just put your possibilities of X. So I would just start with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So essentially, all you're doing is labeling it. Um, your bin width happens to be 1 on this because you're just putting all of your possibilities of X. And then it's very important to include your labels. So this represents the number of fives rolled out of six rolls. So if I roll the die six times, this tells me how many fives that I have. You could just go through and put all of your values on here. So I could go through and I could go to where I feel 33% is going to be and I could go ahead and fill that in. But since I was going to show you how to do it in the graphing calculator, I'm not gonna continue at this moment. I will come back and do it, but you can just do it by hand. If you want to do it in your graphing calculator, you would go to second, stat plot. Um, I want to make sure that plot two and three are turned off, which they are. So I'm going to go to plot one and I want to choose a histogram. And on this one, my X list is an L1. My possible values 
for X or an L1. My frequency, I have to put a frequency list in this, um, is in L2. And then if I just hit the zoom and nine zoom stat, it's going to give me a funky looking thing. It's really not going to be very useful. So if you look at this, this is not what you would want to see. So we're going to go to the window. And what we want to do is we know that we have up to seven. So I'm going to go, up, I mean, we have zero through six. So I'm going to go from zero to seven. I'm going to go one past the six. Right now, my X scale, they're counting by one, um, sixes. We want to change that to one. Um, my Y minimum, we want to change this from, and you could leave it at negative 0 0.3. I'm going to just do negative 0 0.01. And then I'm going to just go up to 0.5 and I'm going to count instead of by ones, I'm going to count by 0.10. Now, if we hit graph, it gives us a better representation. And if we hit trace, it'll actually show us that in this one, we have 33%. In this one, we have the 40. So this would also give you your probabilities. And you can see how much it shows. It does show you that that's pretty much zero. You can barely see it. So those values are pretty much zero. So if I continue drawing out my graph on paper, I would just emulate what I saw in there. And it shows me my probabilities, or you can just do what you see up above. Okay, um, the next one would be about 20. Okay, the next one is about 5, which is here. The point zero zero eight you would just barely see. And then both of these are just pretty much 0. So, like, it's pretty much on the line. You can't even really see it. Um, if they asked you to describe the shape of the distribution, this would be skewed to the right. Okay, and it's skewed to the right because the tail goes to the right. The closer your probability is to 50%, the more symmetric it's going to be. The closer your probability of success is to zero, the more skewed to the right it's going to be. Since one sixth is pretty close to zero, um, that's why this one is so skewed to the right. If you have a probability that's closer to one, then it's going to be more skewed to the left. As always, thanks for watching. I hope that this helped you.